What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Two Car Garage. We are working on our Virago 920 project behind me. We have made some awesome progress putting on our GSXR front end, all the controls, the clip-ons, but now we have to move farther back in the bike and that means the subframe assembly, the seat, and the tank. In total I have three different gas tanks from our donor bikes. This is option one, the strip down welded back option. This is option two, our black tank, but this particular generation or style tank is much more curved. So that won't really fit our overall design quite as well, I don't think. Option three is our red tank. Our red tank is nice because it's not super curved, but the back end isn't welded or anything. It's just flat down, so it would take a bit more fabrication. And I actually have a fourth gas tank that I just found. Uh, this one's also black. It's the less swoopy version of it. However, this one's got a really big dinghy right here on the side of it that because of its position, it'd be pretty hard to pop and pull, I think. So it looks like all of our gas tanks do have these screwed on badges, which means that our finished product, unless we fill it in, is gonna have those screwed on badges as well. And I'm just not sure I want that. But for now, I think our best bet will be to sort of mock things up using our red tank. Because I got so many donor bikes, I actually had some parts. And one of the parts that I had was a seat, this seat in particular. Um, and, you know, I kind of like this style seat. I never built a bike with this exact style seat before. It's not exactly Cafe Racer. It's not exactly Scrambler. It's just its own, like, you know, I don't know, is it Tracker style? No, it's not Tracker. I don't know. But either way, I kind of like it and it came with the bikes, so I might as well use it. Now I found a pre-made seat pan for the Viragos uh, subframe assembly that fits this style seat, and this is it. It bolts right up to the Virago, uh, it looks cool, and the best part was that it was like $200. When you factor in the cost of all the metal, and that's an additional you know, 10% for waste or error, uh, plus all of the hours and hours and hours of fabrication time that it would take me to design and fabricate something like this. It was really a no-brain. Here it is attached. The sides use those pre-existing mounts. The top, however, mounts on the gas tank sort of front cross brace. So we would have to drill and mount some uh, nuts and bolts there. Let's see how this looks with the tank and the seat. This looks so good. Okay, uh, it looks like crap. Um, we've got a bit of a problem and that's that our tank nowhere near lines up with our subframe assembly and our seat. Our subframe assembly and our seat is pretty much where it needs to be. It's in a nice straight line with the top hump of the frame and our front end. It might seem a little bit tilted like upward, but that's only because we're up on our center stand. The astute watchers among you will see that I did mount our rear tire onto our wheel. And that's because for this mock-up, I wanted to have our tire on just for all of our measuring. So this tank, as it sits, won't work, which now I'm starting to understand that stripped steel tank with the welded back. Take a look at that real quick. So it looks like whoever built this tank before shaved off that back part, welded on our plate, which allowed it to be mounted a little bit higher, more in line with the frame. The problem with this, however, is that the previous owner didn't plan on using this particular subframe and seat, so our seat won't fit because it's too long. So it would not line up and be too far back. It would need to come forward maybe an extra like two or three inches. On top of that, the tank doesn't have like one way to mount it. There's no like, you know, rear like bolt or anything. So it would still take some fabrication. Well, after trying all the stock tanks, I decided to go aftermarket. And when you Google Yamaha Virago build, whether it's a Cafe Racer build, whether it's a Bobber, whether it's a Scrambler style, there seems to be one common trend, and that is the Mojave fuel tank. 
So the Mojave um, is just, I guess, the name of this tank from a Benelli motorcycle back in the day. Uh, but because of the shape of this, the straight undercut lines, the kicked in knee panels, uh, the length of it, it's really, really popular in builds, especially this Virago build. And I was debating for a while because I'm like, okay, if lots of other people are using it, maybe I shouldn't use it. So I actually tried off camera a couple other like standard custom fuel tanks of different sizes and different shapes and nothing looked right until I got this in the mail and set it up and it looks right. So, I mean, that, that's why people are using them for these custom Virago builds because it just looks right. Now it is not mounted up yet. It's gonna be a little bit higher in the front because of course it has to sit on those rubber bungs and the back isn't mounted down yet, but just sitting there, you can see what I mean, how the straight underline will match this straight line of it. It looks really, really good. So now that we have our fuel tank picked out, we need to figure out how we're gonna mount this thing. Well, you double check, you triple check, you quadruple check, and even you um, quinteta check, penta check. I, I don't know. E either way, you check a lot, but eventually you just have to take the whole saw out. This method actually worked astoundingly well. Traced it on one side so I could get the edges the uh, stock hole, and then where I put mine. I sharpied this strong edge here and then cut it out. That way, when I mirror it, I can use this sharpie to just sit inside sort of as a guide. Now I had to find the center of this hole, so you can see with some trial and error, it, it's been a while since high school geometry, um, I used uh, two parallel uh, equidistant lines made diagonals between them, um, and then that's the center. I just punched it through, used that center of my circle to um, center punch, drilling this out, it'll be exactly where it is on the other side. So as long as I keep that hole saw somewhat straight, we should be good. Should be. Now I figured I can start on the rear sets a while as well. On the factory arm here, where you have the passenger pegs and the, um, the driver pegs, these will work best mounted right down there. The problem though is that there are these two little locator uh, things in this cast aluminum that need to be ground down. All right, so we have this uh, foot here, foot rest thing that the rear sets are gonna go on this bottom hole. I trimmed off those little locators for the pegs. That way it can uh, mount on easily. However, this top hole here is extra and we don't need it. Now this is cast aluminum, so what I'm gonna try to do is just TIG weld, fill in all of that hole and then just uh, flap disc it smooth. I was thinking about putting a bolt in and then welding it and then it'd be a lot easier, right? The problem is, is steel bolt in the cast aluminum. I won't be able to weld that uh, easily. Well, TIG welding uh, to fill that hole did a great job, actually. Um, it's pretty remarkable. All right, the tank is on, the front stays. Let me show you what I did here. The back is just propped up because I'll still have to fab up a little like height mount for the back. We have our pipe that's the perfect length, our two bumpers on each side. Now we just slide it in and we weld it around the hole to make sure that it stays put. 
Now that the front of the tank is mounted, I need to look at the back and figure out how to mount this up. I not only need to bolt it down, but raise it up a little bit too. This is what we're looking at from the factory. Now, whatever it is, I have to make it somewhat removable because in there is the uh, top mounting bolt for this rear monoshock. All right, I think I have it figured out what we're gonna do here. So we remove the seat and we see that I just have a little piece of tube cut at an angle on the bottom and flat on the top. And I just adjusted it to the exact height that I want. And then I'm gonna take this socket head cap and weld it inside the tube so that it's sticking up. And that way you can just put, see this socket head cap? It'll just be sticking up like that. That way you can just put a nut on it and that'll be hidden by the seat. So the order of operations will be you take the seat off, wah -ba boom and then this bolt will be up. You take that nut off, wah -ba boom and then you can just pull the tank off and all this hardware will be uh, hidden. You know, the tank doesn't need to be on with like, you know, like, 3 16th thick chromoly tube or anything, uh, you're just basically keeping it in place. So I think that tube coming up with this socket head welded in will be a nice, easy, that's the important uh, modifier there, solution to our uh, fab problem here. Okay, the tank is done. Let me show you how I did it. So the seat is just temporarily on. So I cut back this subframe a little bit and on that stock cross section after I cut out the mount that was already there, all I did was weld an angled piece of tube with that bolt welded to the inside of it. So that bolt sticks up there. It's the exact length that I need. I just have a washer on each side and the nut. Those washers, I'm gonna use uh, rubber washers just to insulate the vibrations a little bit in the tank. But for now, I just used washers to hold it down just to test it out. So uh, that is very, very secure. And it's exactly where I want it because when the seat is on, you get this. Now that our tank is securely fastened and right where we need it, we know our seat's going to go here. We just need to figure out how to attach it. This prefab subframe that I got um, has this crossbar right here and these two tabs right there. I think I'll be able to keep these two tabs where they are because there's two holes on the bottom of this seat and I can just use like the uh, forwardmost one. Um, however, this crossbar I'm going to have to move. So, I mean, that's it easiest thing in the world is cut it off and move it right up or make a new one if I have to. And then that'll just attach this right where I need it. So not too exciting as far as fabrication goes, but necessary. And guys, once we just move that one little tab there, our tank and seat are going to be done. And that is a huge deal because that's what like makes a custom motorcycle, right? The tank and the seat. I'm loving the look of this, how you have this straight line under here, the tank, this kicked up seat, the big mono shock sticking up there, honking in the back. This is coming together. And here you go, this could not have been simpler. I'm actually really, really happy and somewhat impressed with myself with how we managed to attach it all and fabricate mounts to keep it really, really straightforward and really simple. I mean, I just put the tank and the seat on in like a minute and a half. Uh, it is simple, clean, and really, really sharp looking. I am thrilled with how it turned out. The next thing we're gonna do are these babies rear sets, foot controls. Now, we already grinded down and uh, TIG weld filled these holes and we got it ready to mount. These are just cheap Chinese ones that I got with one of the donor bikes. Um, they're not particularly nice. They, you know, work, but that's it. Instead, when you 
Once you get started, it's hard to stop, right? So instead, I got these beautiful Cognito Moto billet aluminum rear sets that are just absolutely gorgeous. The fit and finish is beautiful on these. What I really like about it, which seems odd at first, is that the peg is much, much wider than most rear sets, right? This, I mean, just look at the difference. You can actually fit your boot on these, which is nice. I mean, doesn't that kind of make sense? Like you build a custom motorcycle, but you still, you know, want to be able to, you know, ride it. This is going to be a big project because it's not just a matter of bolting these on, it's figuring out all the linkages so that we can shift and brake adequately. That's kind of what I'm going for, right? Adequately, not great. Doesn't have to be great. Adequate. I'm a reasonable man. I can't thank you guys enough for watching. This is a really, really big build. It is taking, and it's going to take, a long time, right? We want to do it right the first time. We knocked out our tank and seat. Next is rear sets. Be sure you stay tuned for that video when it comes out. Please like and subscribe just to give me some added motivation to keep making these videos, you know? I do a lot of work in here. It takes a little bit of extra work, though, to hit the record button and, you know, edit these videos afterwards. So I appreciate your continued support. We'll see you next time. Thanks.